Hey, hi, hello, everybody. How is everybody? What is it? 23rd podcast. It is December 15th. Vivi, how are you? Why are you dressed for Colorado? <laughs> it's been pretty chilly here in Baja California. It's about 49 degrees today. And yesterday we had a big storm. It rained all day. So it's chilly, but it's it's nice and warm in our hearts. So <laughs> we're here. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I'm really excited about this. it is a topic that I think at this time of year is near and dear to everyone. Um, the topic is motivation, right? The topic is how do we fight those urges to just say, I, I really don't want to do what I need to do, even though I'm not unhappy. I just... I don't want to do this proposal. I don't want to bake another five dozen cookies. Um, I don't even want to decorate for the holidays. I mean, just all this stuff that happens to us that is kind of, um, you know, kind of rough. And motivation is really key to not just success in business, but it's really critical. Oh, T, you're you're frozen a little bit. Just for now. Are you back? Yeah, you you were frozen for just a second. We missed the last sentence. Okay, well, you're totally frozen. So um, it might be my computer. So I'm gonna let you pick it up and see if it gets better with our guests. So what we decided to do tonight is really talk about motivation and practical tips as well as inspirational tips of how we get through to do things that in the moment we don't want to do. And you know, it's funny. I um, There's just so much going on. I've got a washing machine that doesn't work. I've got, um, <clears throat> I've got a grandkid that doesn't work. <laughs> I've got two deadlines on proposals. Um, and I was like, mm, maybe Vivi can do this herself. And you know what motivated me? my love for you and my love for Mike and my love for the leaders of IQMK that have agreed to be on this call to talk about breaking through our own resistance. Once again, breaking through our own resistance. So I'm going to jump off because I'm a little nervous. I'm going to see if I can set up my other computer, but why don't you begin that conversation, Ms. Vivi? And thank you for getting warm and being a part of tonight. It's all good, Tanya. You know, it's that resilience in us, right? I mean, my internet wasn't working two minutes before I had to jump on this podcast. But, you know, we show up and that's half the battle. And so tonight we have uh, Mike Asgari, CEO of IQMK Global, and also VP Pichi. And she is our leader in the Philippines. So we're super excited to have her on board today. And I am going to bring him on. Hi, Mike and Peachy. How are you tonight? Or this morning for you, Peachy. How is, how's it, how's it going? Hello. Yeah. Good morning from Philippines. Yes. Good morning. We're so happy to have you here today. Um, and yeah. thank you so much for, for hopping on. Uh, thank Mike, you. how's it going with you? We can't hear you, Mike. <laughs> oh, sorry. Mike, you're there you are. Uh, there you thank are. you, Vivi, for introduction. Appreciate it. Uh, it I'm excited because uh, our uh, a very lovely VP of uh, uh, operation in Philippines is with us tonight and tomorrow this morning. Good morning, PG. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I know there are people from Philippines yes, joining good us. Good morning, right now. Mike. And then, uh, great to have you, uh, uh, PG, on the call and on the uh, streaming. And I, I'm sure uh, uh, Vivi already prepared a few questions about how you motivate uh, the whole team in Philippines to do what they do. Vivi, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to start first, actually, with how do you keep yourself motivated? Because we know that to you know to show up for others we got to show up for ourselves first right 
um, we got to fill our own yeah. cup so that we can, we can do that. So yeah, Peachy, let us um, share with us, what are some of the things that, you know, that motivate you that, you know, every day when you wake up, just bring that light of sunshine to get what you need to do, you know, done. And you're doing an amazing, amazing job in just really, you know, growing in this amazing team in the Philippines. So uh, I'm going to let you have the floor. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Vivi. Um, you know, um, um, I just would like to share how I get motivated, you know. Every day we woke up, uh, of course, especially during this challenging time, it's very hard to get as motivated all the time, right? There are times, you know, we get affected with the news that we hear from the news that we see from TV. And of course, that affects us emotionally, physically, and mentally. But knowing that you have this kind of product and company that can really help during this time, that keeps me motivated to wake up every morning to get to talk to most of our I-Core leaders, making sure that they will also do the same, you know, that they will never stop sharing product. They shouldn't be, you know, now, never in a day that they wouldn't talk to anyone about this amazing product. And what another thing that motivates me is, you know, that at the end of the day, you would hear calls or you will get to receive calls or will hear from people that, you know, they were relieved from pain, you know, they were able to get sleep better and they got the appetite, they have the energy. So it gets us more motivated to continue sharing this product. And even it's not about the product, you know, what gets us motivated is, you know, we are also able to help them achieve their dreams. Okay? Because there are a lot of people, yes, they may be, they may have this already, they may have that already, but still, there are still something that they wanted to have, right? And it also makes us motivated that, you know, we are a channel or a vehicle for them to reach that dream. Okay? So that keeps us motivated. And, you know, setting goals, you know, achieving dreams, that is actually one way of getting motivated, you know. Just like for me at my age, basically, you know, what gets me motivated to wake up or to do better every day is that I know I can touch a life today. I love that. I love that, Peachy. And I love that you said that, you know, you touched a little bit on setting goals. And yesterday we had, not yesterday, it's Wednesday, Monday, uh, we had a training call with our Spanish team here, um, you know, well, from Rosarito, but we had people from Puerto Rico and her people from Mexico. And we talked about, you know, uh, just really having the mindset of being, um, you know, uh, planning, right, of setting those goals, of, you know, having those, uh, you know, personal strategy sessions, right, and like you said earlier, keeping people engaged, and what you really mentioned to me really sounds is it's serving leadership, right, it's serving leadership, because you are, you know, motivating others, helping them achieve their dreams, helping them, you know, towards, you know, what it is that they need right now. And like you said, some people need sleep, <laughs> right? They're struggling with sleep. And here you have something that can help with that. And so it's really, really, um, you know, important that we write those down. And I love that you said setting those goals, right? When you put them on paper. And those are some of the things too. Uh, one of the strategies that I was just going to mention is writing things down and putting them in a place where you could see them, <laughs> right? Sometimes we write things down and we put it away and out of sight, out of mind. So, you know, maybe having that vision board, do you use anything like that? Any, any strategies, Peachy, that you want to share with us that you maybe share with the Philippine team? Yeah. In fact, you know, that is one thing. I mean, that is already very common to most of our leaders but if you practice it you create your dream board every day when you woke up you know 
what goals you have to meet may it may take three months six months or it may take two three years right but what is important is you know how to achieve your dream and once you have your dream you have to protect your dream okay you should be very careful with whom you share your dreams right because mm -hmm. not all people may support you with your dreams okay mm -hmm. so choose your circle mm -hmm. your tribe okay you may be destined to soar but if you are surrounded with negative people they may pull you down and you mm -hmm. know that may hamper achieving your dream okay so always use positive words positive words have power right so we have to continue claiming that one day we will have this dream that we have put in in our vision board okay so we always have to find like-minded souls like us who will really bring us you know to that um that would encourage us and would give high spirit people would with vibration these are the people that can actually help us achieve our dreams and of course once we set the vision board we have to set the plan when do we achieve those dreams uh -huh. right so it's very important so vision board is a start but things that i have mentioned is also important to yeah. achieve those dreams yeah so put them in action right so the next yes. step action. <laughs> pick up the phone <laughs> you know write yeah. that too. uh you know check in with your eye partner yeah absolutely yeah. I, I totally agree with that thank you peachy is there anything else that you want to us to know you want to share tonight about motivation in general one thing one quote one thought anything anything else okay um if you are to ask me what is motivation for me motivation is my purpose why am i living on earth why mm. is my purpose so that is actually my motivation if you know your purpose, you will be motivated to do it every day. So if my purpose is to be a blessing to many, then I will wake up every morning, no matter what, no matter how is the weather, no matter how is the challenging times, I will make up because I am motivated. It is because a lot of people will be blessed through me because that is my purpose. So that's how I'm, how I am motivated. I love that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Peachy. I am am listening and knowing. Excuse me. I don't have a sore throat. I just was screaming at uh, children earlier. Um, <laughs> but what I want to say is this: having purpose is is so critical to getting up in the morning and having delight and passion in your heart. However, as someone who has, and I'm sure you've gone through very bleak, very difficult times, but I think back when I had, was facing cancer and I was facing cancer alone, running a multi-million dollar company with about 40 employees. And I remember laying in bed, nauseous, and just really talking to God and saying, I just don't know how I can do this. Every muscle, every bone aches, and my heart hurts. <clears throat> and I remember, I think at that point, learning motivation really, really well. And I'd like to ask Mike, I'm going to share what I learned, but I'd like, Mike has shared a lot about getting through really dark, tragic times and still functioning at the top of your game or nearly at the top of your game. For me, when I was laying there and really honestly didn't know how I was gonna get up to let the dogs out and get them water, I would put my hand over my heart because I really believe that motivation comes from 
a place that you can't name. And it's not in your mind. People say, oh, it's mind over matter. It's mind over challenge. But for me, it's this unusual spiritual heart-based place that every time I thought I would rather not be in a physical body, I could put my hand there, actually physically feel your life still beating and listen. I would listen for a reason to get up. And those reasons were weird. Sometime it was just, you know, there's really good cheesecake at the diner today. You'll be able to eat that. It'll taste good to you. And sometimes that was enough. And my heart did that for me. It's not always your children. It's not always being able to help someone's health, which is phenomenal, which is what we do every day in our IQMK community. But it's really about what speaks to you and what energizes you. So I'm going to ask you again, Peachy, after we hear from Mike, for you to throw away all the wonderful things you said, because they're all real and they're all important. But I know that you dig down deeper. You dig down deeper than just having a mission. You dig down deeper than just wanting to help people. And I'm going to ask Mike, because Mike, you have shared so much with all of us and you have shared so much in my own transformation physically spiritually financially over the past year where what does your heart say some days and can you can you talk to us from that place oh i'm sorry i'm i was muted and uh, hello, uh, Tanya. Uh, good evening and good morning to Filipino uh, team. And uh, thank you for being here. You're doing a great job. Uh, I just want to say is I, I had a blessed life, uh, and I believe that uh, everybody has potential to do better. Uh, and all we need to do is explore those potential. Every morning I wake up uh, is a blessing because many people do not wake up. So that's where I start getting my motivation that I'm awake. I just lost a friend just a couple of days ago. He didn't wake up. That's all it happened. So motivate you that you have a day to be alive and do your best for yourself and for people that you can touch. And that's a really good day. We go day by day and be thankful that the day we have that we can make a difference in somebody else's life. A smile you have, you make somebody a smile. A, something that you can share, good or bad, you can make a difference in somebody's life. So, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Man PG is right is uh, when we wake up, we, we know we have a purpose. We know where we're going. We know what we need to do. And uh, I know she does uh, a lot. Every morning she wake up, she knows that she has a mission to go out there and help many other people. And I also, after your uh, uh, question, also, uh, Tanya, I'd like to ask her uh, how he see, how she sees we have a few very good leaders that do a really great job. Also, she had dinner with them uh, last week. So I want to also ask her, how are they motivate themselves to become very good in last four months? A few leaders become so successful that it's unbelievable for regular people to do that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's all about a purpose all about waking up, being positive, and have positive attitude attitude to have go. And one other thing, every night I talk to myself for a few minutes. What have I done today? What have I learned today? 
and what can I do to make myself better tomorrow if there is a tomorrow so it's always you review what you've done during the day I yes I talked to uh, if two vendors I talked to Tanya I talked to Lynette I talked to uh, PG I talked to you know I I review all of them and I said you know uh, Tanya said something that I learned from her. I learned every time I talk to Tanya, to Bibi, to PG, to everyone. We always learn something new. And that's at least we learned something that we were not as, as thankful as we should be. Because we should be more thankful from people who we have. We're surrounded with very good people. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I know we have many guests, so uh, I'll let uh, PG to answer your question. Go ahead, PhD. Go ahead. You're unmuted. You, you can. We can hear you. Yeah. Was there any? Was there a question? Sorry. The question was, purpose is really important, but when you personally are challenged, right? Like you mentioned, there's so much loss, so much problem in the Philippines, negative people in your zone. You know, there has to be times that you just don't want to deal with it anymore. You just kind of want to lay in bed, you know? What personally, I know you said to help people and that's great, but what interrupts your motivation? Let's say that. What interrupts, what distracts you? What takes your motivation away? That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, we're still human and there are times that we go low spirit and basically if you know uh people try to demotivate us um of course there may they may have their personal reason why doing that to us but you know uh every time i encounter that i will always look at the mirror and would say to myself i have done through a lot okay i have surpassed a lot professionally and personally i have gone through a lot and i am so thankful and blessed that each of every challenge i have faced i was able to you know to to combat or to conquer those negative and uh struggles that i have um another way for me to get motivated, especially during that time when I'm very low in spirit, I would always remind myself that, you know, I am alive, I am healthy, and I have the capacity to touch the lives of many. May it be financially, may it be true opportunity, or may it be true the products that I am promoting right now that keeps me motivated and you know knowing that you can actually save a life in fact this is what i always share when i do my closing remarks during our business presentation or product presentation we are really looking for people who are like us like us that can save you know by sharing this product it is because there's an urgency Imagine if we are 1,000 people, then that's 1,000 lives a day, right? So that keeps me motivated every time. I would always think how blessed I am. And that would keep me motivated. And rushingly, I will, you know, I will get out of my bed and prepare for another challenging and blessed day. That's lovely. Really mm -hmm. lovely. Well, Vivi, I'm going to bring on someone I know that you work closely with, too. And stay in the wings, Peachy. We may have more questions for you and need inspiration. But um, I, want to, I want to introduce Lynette Domingo, who is, um, was always an inspiration for me in the very beginning. And, you know, I realize as I'm looking at a list here, some of the people who are on the call are have no knowledge of what IQMK is. And I'm going to give a quick little background. But they're on the call because they want the topic. 
They want to know how to stay motivated. They want to know how to do the things that they want to do, but for some reason they're resisting not doing it. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown. So while we're all on this call, IQMK Global is a, an international company that promotes a product that is essentially an antioxidant. It's called muscadine grape seed and skins. Muscadine grapes are one of the nature's leading sources of antioxidants that prevents disease, heals disease, and also improves quality of life. We do have a multi-level marketing business around it, but everyone in our still yet small organization is first and foremost to expanding a movement that says health is more about good nutrition, natural health, and community and support than the things that we've been taught. Pharmacology, um, you know, unnecessary interventions, unnecessary diagnostics. We want health to be easy. We want health to be fun. Now, let's go back to motivation. Lynette Domingo motivated me to really look into how I was living my life, how I was earning my money, and the lifestyle that I wanted was not in alignment with how I was living my life. So I know that Lynette will take the screen beautifully to talk about what is motivation to her and how does she cultivate it daily in her life. Ready to bring you on? There you are, Lynette. Hi, sweetheart. There you are. Hey. There you are. Hey guys, it's nice and cold over here, yeah. Southern California. <laughs> it's cold today. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. How is everybody? Lynette, were you able to hear what Tanya asked you? Uh, I yeah, I caught some of it, but okay. if you could repeat it like really, really quickly, what my what the question was, because I know she had asked a question to Peachy, and I'm not sure if it's the same one. Okay, yeah. And sometimes there's like an audio lag, so we want to know what keeps you motivated. What do you do? You know, how do you practice? Um, and I'm what? Did, what? How did you word it? Tanya ordered it so beautifully, but. Yes. We're talking about motivation and you are a force of energy for IQMK since we met you, you know, you exude that. And so we want to know, uh, you know, how do you keep that? And, you know, despite so many, you know, um, challenges, right, that had, you know, we're all recently. going through a lot, but you've yeah. had some pretty big challenges recently. So tell yes. us, how do you, you know, overcome that? How do you just really um, keep going? There's a couple of things that are my go-to things to do, okay? Number one, first and foremost, I pray. Some people call it meditation. Some people call it, you know, just being quiet. Um, some people call it uh, uh, connecting to the ground, connecting to Mother Earth. Um, and my way of connecting to Mother Earth, you know, I, I go to the beach. I, you know, I listen to the waves and that's, that's nature talking to me. You have to connect to nature, number one. Um, and for me, that's prayer. That's, you know, you have to always bring in the higher power. Right. You can't do this by yourself. And if you try to, you know, that's, that's a very arrogant way to look at life because you need the help of, you know, your creator. Um, so that's number one. Number two, you have to release those happy endorphins, whatever it is that you need to do to release those, those happy hormones you got to yeah. release it. Everybody knows that, you know, I play volleyball. It's been raining. I haven't played volleyball in like a week and I'm, you know, yeah. I'm getting like a little crazy and, um, and I, you know, I dance and in at night when it's cold, it's challenging, but I force myself to do it because I know I need to release that energy. And if I don't, then that starts to put me in, in a realm of, um, I don't want to say depression, but decreased energy where where 
if my energy is decreased, I won't be able to go above and beyond and pull that energy out for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's yeah. that. Those are the two things. The third thing that I do, guys, and, and I know it's going to be difficult for for those of you that have significant others. But one of the things I've been doing lately is when I go to bed, I put on a wealth and inspirational meditation that just plays when I wake up four hours later, it's still playing. So it's getting deep into my subconscious. And I'm noticing as I'm driving and, and these thoughts that pop into my head are thoughts that I know I picked up from, from that meditation. Mm -hmm. So it's all about creating new habits. And I know those of you that have significant others, you can't always do that. Yeah. But sometimes what you need to do is if you don't can't do it at night, then do it in the middle of the day. Take a half hour nap, put on something that's going to delve deep into your subconscious because once you tap into that, what they call it is is um, bending reality. Once you have the ability to bend reality to your will, and you can only do that at the subconscious level, right? So, and and the, I know these are kind of things that are like, ooh, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's a lot of stuff that that I've kind of learned across thirty years of being in business, mm -hmm. right? So, so there's some things that you have to dig within, and sometimes yeah. you have to pull from you know, from the, from the sources that, that don't live within you, but you know, you can tap in from above down inside out. Right. So you pull from above, take it inside, pull it out. And that's, and that's always been kind of my, my go-to, you know, you have to, you have to stay active. And, um, but on those days that, you know, it's kind of tough to stay active. You need to find a way to release those um, those happy hormones, whether it be, you know, there there's a lot of studies that were done by scientists on Olympic athletes, and what they do is is they they attach these sensors onto all the body parts, the muscles that they use in their particular field of expertise, whether it be a runner, a swimmer, you know, a gymna a gymnast, whatever they're doing. And they ask these gymnasts, these, these high level athletes to think about their routine, think about their race, think about what, you know, their, visualize their, um, their event. Right? And what they found phenomenally was that all of the muscles that you, that you're using in your mind during, while you're visualizing this, it was starting to fire. It was starting to, you know, all the electric currents were starting to, to really activate, even if you were just sitting in a room thinking about your event, right? So if, if there are situations where, you know, it's raining, it's snowing, you can't really get outside, there are ways to activate your, uh, your ability to release those endorphins, those happy hormones, right? So um, I know it's kind of a little bit, ooh, a little bit over a lot of people's heads right now, but it's it's what I do. No, but but Lynette, I have to I have to just stop you there because Cirilla said um, Lynette tackles everything in a positive way. She embraces the moment, and you know, embracing the moment, we hear that all the time. The whole concept of living in the present, living in the now, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, you know. But it's not just living in the Nile, in the now, in the now, but living with a positive attitude in the now. Absolutely. I know lots of people could wallow in the now like nobody else, but it's what you just said. How do you release your happy endorphins, right? How do you, you know, I just, I put a post up on Muscadine Global the other day that said, I was reading this research that if you just smile, if you just lift the corners yes. of your mouth up, it actually, um, Cody, can you be with that bird, please? Sorry about that. My bird's trying to get my attention. Um, when you release those muscles and you put them in an upward position, you actually release endorphins. You actually yes. release neurotransmitters that help you to be healthier and happier. I mean, God's got us all put together right. You fake Correct. a smile, your heart wakes up, you know? Yes. And so what you were just saying, the other thing, dancing, right? Holding someone's hand. All of those things can push us to a new level of motivation 
And Making so somebody laugh really, is probably one of the best yeah, things yeah. that you can do for yourself. Yeah. To, uh, you know, to release those happy hormones, right? Because yeah. when you see other people smile and you're, and it's a result of something you said or did, you know, that, that only, you know, they have, the, there's a saying that when you're depressed and you share it, you lessen it. But when you're happy and you share it, you multiply it. That's exactly what laughter does. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a phenomenal. Thing. It activates the mirror neurons. Right. So we have this mirror yes. neurons. And I was so, so conscious of that the other day. I was going up the escalator in Target and it was, you know, a rainy day in San Diego. Things go haywire. And whenever it rains, you know, Southern California, we can't drive and drive. You know how to deal with it, right? In Florida. So I, 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 I was aware, I became self-aware that most of the people that I was seeing and making eye contact had this tight faces, right? So I'm like, oh my gosh, is my face tight too? Am I, you know, like, am I, do I have that? And I as I was going up the escalator, I started to just smile. And the people that were coming down on the other side, I, I, I like made a purpose to make eye contact with them. And it was just like, it was like almost forced, but they did it. Like they smiled and it just changed that perspective for me. So as right. I'm, you know, hearing you, Peachy, Mike, and everyone, my particular take, it's uh, similar to what you said. Spirituality is very important to me. Um, and I know that I cannot do this thing called life without my creator because he knows me personally the right. most. And I can be the most authentic self with him. But I also know that living authentically has helped me overcome a lot of many things that have come in my life. Um, and I don't want to change that. So that is my go-to. I cannot lose my authenticity for a job for a person and communicating that, being self-aware, you know, having those self-aware, the self-awareness and behaviors. My day can go up and down and it has been this whole past 18 months, having a baby, losing a job, you know, maintaining a marriage, keeping up with your children. I mean, we all have so many different things and you have to stay authentic to yourself. You have to take in knowledge of when you're self-reflective, what can I do? What, what are your go-tos? So similar to what we're saying right now, we all have our different things, right? And just taking in the knowledge. One of my strengths is a lifelong learner. I am my best when I'm learning something new and when I'm motivating myself to do something new and different and something that challenges me. I have to be challenged somehow. And I just, you know, in my 40s now, been so self-reflective of things that I can do now that I will continue to do. And one other thing that I wanted to share is that I am learning to control my nervous system in my forties. No idea how to do that in my twenties, which probably led to a lot of <laughs> impulsive things that I did. Right. But how to show up better for my children how not to be triggered by something that I experienced when I was a child. Right. How to break generational cycles. That <clears throat> learning brings me to be present and become my and, be, and continue to be my authentic self. And then there's other, you know, pieces of knowledge. You know, aligning yourself with people that share those values, protecting right. your peace, protecting your peace. You know, I remember my circle. I was the people that people would call because I was the life of the party. And, you know, they, that's just what it was, but it wasn't always authentic. Um, and so I have learned that protecting your peace and refining who you keep in your tribe, right? Whether, whatever path you're having on. And so it's, it's, uh, I really love this topic tonight because it takes you back to like, Hey, you know what? We also can't fake positivity. You got to stay authentic to it. Right. Um, and Tanya's really good at that. She's like, man, I had a crummy day, <laughs> you know, and she's really great about just, you know, really sharing the vulnerable pieces of herself. And that's another thing. If we cannot be vulnerable with ourselves or other people, then we're not authentic. Mm -hmm. right? And I've learned that from her. Oh, I thank her. you. I was just going to say to you, I'm so proud of you. You know, I've known you for years and life knocks some of the best of us over and we never recover. 
but you are not only not a person that falls down for more than a second, but while you're getting up, you take others with you. And that is, that is truly servant leadership. I want to, I want to just stop and make a note to self and to others. You know, we are a health driven company and, and the team that I have, you know, I call, I call the group that I have a community of wellness enthusiasts. Um, they're all very much like you, Vivi, maybe not quite as evolved, but really and truly, look, I'm here because I don't know why I'm really here, but I'm authentically dedicated to making a movement in health that's easier and more effective happen. And if that's through diet <clears throat> and hope and loving kindness, then I'm in it for the long haul. And I'm just thinking in my own mind about Mary Mason, who everyone will meet in Orlando. She's one of our newest uh, team members in Global Muscadine. And we met her in Asheville. And she had been like a superstar Mary Kay person. And she retired her downline, retired and was making very, she put herself as a single mom and her kids through life on Mary Kay. She got married, things got, you know, a little more comfortable. So she retired. She said she saw our ad and it was basically a pancake brunch with muscadine jelly and biscuits. And I put it up on Eventbrite because I was speaking at a hospital conference, a very traditional hospital conference. And, uh, we, you know, we had like nine people show up to a, an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the mountains. And she was one of them. And she said, you know, I woke up this morning and I remembered seeing it. And I remembered registering and I said, do I really want to do this? I don't know where this address is. It's an hour drive. I'm nervous. Like I've never done this kind of thing before. Just walk into someone's house and eat pancakes and talk about a muscadine. So she called her girlfriend who was very sweet, but you could tell she was there by force. And they kind of met up in our little Airbnb and the rest is history. You know, she said, and I, and I quote, I, I really wanted to find work that motivated me again. And I loved Mary Kay and I loved helping women feel and look better about themselves. But I really think it's time to think about people's health. And it was like, whoa, whoa, can I be in your downline? I mean, she was so authentic and she is. And um, she is an amazing person. And I think about what we're trying to do in Orlando. And those of you that aren't a part of IQMK, don't worry about it. Our purpose in Orlando is to explore the power of nutrition to transform our health. And secondly, to talk about how do you live authentically to be more successful in your business and in your personal life. We have speakers throughout the entire program, but especially on Saturday that get paid literally like Ted, like Ted talk people, thousands of dollars to motivate and inspire people in spite of themselves. You know, one, one question maybe I'd love to ask everybody. And, and that is, we all know people that believe in muscadine <clears throat> or believe that healthy diets will save them. Right. I was 340 pounds 25 years ago. I couldn't lose that weight until my boss said to me, I love you. I just wish you could see what a wonderful person you are so that you could love yourself enough to take off that weight. It came from an authentic place. It took me a year of her coaching me. I didn't do any special diet except knock out sugar, bread, you know, all the white stuff. And I rode a stationary bike an hour every day. And what motivated me before I lost my first 30 pounds was that woman just calling me to say, how did it feel to do that hour today? Did you read a book while you were doing it? You know, I mean, how do we motivate each other to better health? Everyone knows somebody that buys a bottle of Must Natural and never uses it or buys a bottle, takes 10 pills out of it and says, I didn't feel anything. It's this lack of motivation for our own self 
for our own well-being. That really disturbs me. There are people, Peachy, that have purposes, huge ones, that run big faith-based organizations that die of massive strokes because they weren't motivated to help themselves. What is that motivation? And how do we help people love themselves? Because that might very well be the birthplace of motivation and success. Any responses? I'm sorry, no, I got on a no. soapbox for a minute. I was thinking that because it goes back to, um, you know, when we were talking about earlier, that kind of higher thing, right? And I've been able to, to really think about when I need something, I ask for it. If it's more faith, if it's more motivation, if it's more patient, patience for myself, um, if it's more grace to give others, I ask for it in prayer. I ask for it because I know that um, I can't perhaps get it for myself. And, you know, learn to ask. And when you're authentic um, and vulnerable, also learn to ask others. It's okay. You know, yeah. being okay with that. Um, and, and sometimes... Um, we kind of are suffering in our own little bubbles or islands. And I had that conversation with my sister. Like, you know, we've all been going through so much this whole year. But when we talk, it's like, how are you? Oh, we're good. We're doing okay. You know, we're hanging in there. <laughs> but we don't really say, hey, I'm struggling. I'm seeking therapy. Or, you know, I'm struggling here. I'm losing my patience with my kids. Whatever it is. Um, you know, and just to ask for it. And I find that when I ask for it, especially when I ask for, you know, more faith um, and, you know, more motivation to get up during the day and tackle the day <laughs> um, and just to <clears throat> do it in a way that I am not knocking anybody else's energy off. Mm -hmm. It's hard, <laughs> right? It's hard. And um, if you're a parent, I mean, it's, it's a different perspective, I think, uh, because we do have this little human, you know, like the one calling my name right now, um, that need us, right? And they are a source of motivation and purpose for us. But I cannot show up for that little one if I don't give myself first the grace and what I need. So right. I need to ask for it. And that's what's helped me. There's a saying that I always tell people when they're asking for advice and I tell them that they have to take care of themselves first because you cannot pull people out of the quicksand if you're standing in there with them, right? There's a reason why when, when you're on an airplane and they tell you, put your, your mask on first before you help somebody else, you mm -hmm. have to be in a place where you can exude that energy to help somebody mm -hmm. else. Otherwise, you're both going down, Yeah. right? I think, I think it's really key though. I, I don't want to lose sight of when you need motivation, ask for it. Yes. I'm just thinking, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of complicated people. I'm healthy. I'm okay. My bills are paid. The kids are all right. There's food in the refrigerator. I have so many joyful things to look forward to. But there just are times when it's just too complicated. It's just there's, you're just so tangled up. And instead of losing my motivation, I'll call Mike. And so Mike sends me a chocolate bar as motivation. Good stuff, Mike. I'm eating it right now. Here it is. <laughs> we need to make them infused with muscadine. But I'll call Alba, Dr. Alba, who's not on the call tonight. And she'll like, she'll like spin it really fast, like, like a scientist, you know? Okay. So this is what, but you need to ask for help and motivation. It's yeah. not all from your heart mm -hmm. or God. Mm -hmm. We're a tribe. Yeah. We're a tribe. So and I think we were just created for that, right? We, our creator knows us. So, you know, he knows that we need each other. This is not a solitude thing. You know, motivation, success, 
uh, resiliency. You know, everyone that has gone through atrocious things that comes out on the resilient side. You know, I've worked with children that have had alcoholic parents that have had, uh, you know, severe abuse that have grown in cycles and generational gang, um, you know, situations and they have been successful. There's this one person and there's been a lot of studies on youth. There was one person. Oftentimes they needed just that one person, whether it's a bus driver, whether it was the lady at the cafeteria, whether it was their teachers, there's people that are in our path in the chapter that we're living that have helped you. And I think that if you close our eyes right now, you can think of certain people and faces and things that people have done for you when you have needed them in those chapters of your life. And, you know, that just, I want to be that for other people. It's like, I want to pay it forward. You know, like I want to pay it forward. I've seen how other people have pulled my mom raising four kids, uh, you know, on a housekeeper salary with no transportation in a different country, not speaking the language. My mom still doesn't speak English, but she's got college graduates. You know, she's got kids that are, you know, good people. They're resilient. They're making it. They're helping others. And so, you know, I want to also say that it's hard to be motivated when you're sick. Yeah. It's hard to be motivated when your body is not in full health. Mm -hmm. And I would be remiss, of course, if I didn't mention that muscadine grape seed and skins in the way that Mike has brought it to the world, we are bringing it to the world as must natural, put a whole lot of balance in my body, right? Not just, you know, better skin, better hair, reversal of diabetes, uh, prevention of back surgery, big things. But it also has allowed me to be just more physiologically balanced, more hormonally balanced, which has also allowed me to be more motivated, to be more mentally clear. Right. Absolutely. I want to um, stress again, and Mike put up the... Um, uh, the URL. This is what we're going to be doing, guys, but having a lot of fun, music, entertainment. Um, we're going to be talking about how to be our healthiest ever, how to run the most successful side hustles or full-time businesses that you've ever done, and how to be your most authentic, loving, and beautiful to you, self, how to align your spiritual beliefs with how you live in a very habitual and powerful way. So please get registered if you aren't already. Join us January 13th through the 15th for it's a very densely packed two and a half days. But I can guarantee you that you won't want to get off the merry-go-round on Saturday. Um, and you will look forward to the announcement of where our next national meeting will be and when. So I'd like to, to um, ask those of us that are on the screen to define motivation in one sentence. And then I'd like to ask Vivi, as she does so well, to close us out until next week um, when we have a show on healthcare miracles. So uh, for me, motivation is having the courage to love yourself and ask others to love you too. Wow. I'm off. Love you guys. Go ahead. Who's next? Peachy. Love you guys. Go ahead. Who's next? I'm muted. Well, anyway, motivation for me is to love you guys. So, 
Again, thank you for having me here. I love you know, hearing your stories and motivations for me to help be more motivated. Again, I love the part that when you need it, just stories and motivations for me to help be more motivated. Again, I love the part that when you need it, just stories and motivations for me to help be more motivated. PG, I think there was a lot of, there was some feedback. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, can hear us. Go ahead, Mike. There was a lot of, there was some feedback. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, can hear us. Yeah, there was some echo in the background. Go ahead, Mike. There was, a lot yeah. of, there was some feedback. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, can hear us. Yeah, there was some echo in the background. Someone has their phone or something else turned on. So that this is picking up another yes. broadcast. Yeah, there was some echo in the background. Someone has their phone or something else turned on. Yeah, there was some echo in the background. Go ahead, Mike. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. We yeah, this this happened last time too. We were okay. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to hear. I'm going to mute myself. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, motivation to me is what gives the light a meaning. And I want to say uh, that uh, Tanya was right. Uh, a, mo uh, a movement. Uh, this is uh, IQMK is beyond mass natural, is beyond uh, money, is beyond everything. We're creating a movement that we can motivate so many people. And I want to encourage everyone to really think about uh, to register for this event we have uh, for Orlando. It's just a few hundred bucks. I know I have paid uh, up to $3,000. I know we had a real estate aid, uh, uh, business. Lynette was actually the uh, uh, director of the uh, uh, managing the whole real estate for me. And she knows we had had everybody to drive two hours to San Diego. I don't know how much we paid, but we had everybody go there to just get motivated because they were, we go for a speakers and we have so many good speakers gonna be on all, uh, in our event at Orlando. And we'd love to see all of you back there. Thank you. Let's motivate everyone to go to Orlando events. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Go ahead, Lynette. Okay, am I am I unmuted? Yep, you're so, good to go. So for me, for me, motivation comes from our sense of community, our sense of of teamwork and doing it all together. You're not, you know, you're not an island. You're not by yourself. You don't want to be by yourself because it's so much fun when you, you know, when you when you accomplish your goals with like-minded people. Not only is it fun, it's easier, right? So so you're you, not only are you accomplishing your goals, but you're accomplishing other people's goals as well. And, and you just get there faster and you have more fun doing it. So that's my motivation. Love it. I'll be super short. I think motivation is a synergy uh, that we give. It's, it's a force that it's a you know, give and take. And motivation can happen at any time. And, you know, and motivation is also something that needs to be protected. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. We are so grateful for all the speakers and it's our time is up. We hope that you continue to stay motivated and that tonight, you know, gives you the um, motivation to do something for yourself um, and others and continue to share in that and Another thing is don't forget to take your muscadine. So we'll see you next week um, and have a great week. Stay warm, Californians. <laughs> and we are so excited to see everybody in Orlando. Have a good night, everyone.